So I just got some good and bad news and it's the same thing and it's all at the same time. So I'm going to try to explain that. I want to unpack this a little bit. I want to do this video because I hope it's going to help other women that maybe have suffered from low thyroid and probably have gone through maybe a similar trajectory as I have. So I, this weekend I did very extensive blood work. I checked all of my insulin levels. I did a bunch of tests that Ken Berry recommends in his common sense labs. I also checked thyroid antibodies and um, it's very clear that I have Hashimoto's like crazy have Hashimoto's. Okay, so Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Funny enough, on Friday, I did an interview with a specialist, a thyroid specialist, Dr. Heather Stone. And if you have a thyroid condition, you need to watch that and you need to fully understand what she's saying because it's going to help so much. Um, so I wish I would have gotten my blood work done before I did that interview, but it just happened to not work that way and it was scheduled afterwards. Um, the rest of my blood work is awesome from what I can tell. And I'm going to go over that with, um, I'm going to do a video with Tony Hampton soon and he's going to just like break it all down. But we need to talk about Hashimoto's. In 2017, I was diagnosed with a thyroid condition. I'm going to say a thyroid condition because um, I don't remember the doctor explaining it to me at all. I was in a frame of mind that, okay, I have this condition, but I didn't like pull the strings and find out what it meant, what its ramifications were. All I know is that I have this issue uh, and I'm fat because of it. But there's so much more that goes on if you have a thyroid condition. Um, I believe that that doctor understood that I had Hashimoto's. I believe that I don't, I wish I could find my paperwork and my blood work from 2017 and I can't. There's a specific number that was 1000. I didn't understand anything about my test results and I, I didn't, like I said, I didn't care to know. I just knew that I had this thing, that it was keeping me fat. So I got a prescription for levothyroxine, synroid, something like that, whatever. Um, and I didn't take it. And then I got a call from the doctor later. Like I didn't go and get the prescription filled. I called, the doctor called me later. He said, I don't like basically uh, encouraged me by telling me that my thyroid levels were dangerously high and that I needed to take them. So I have this number of 1000 ringing around in my head, dangerously high. Okay, I will take them. More recently, I asked my friend Rebecca, there's some number on my blood work that's at a thousand related to my thyroid. She's like, if it was a thousand T3, TSH, all those other numbers, I would have been dead. <laughs> so it had to be a thyroid antibody. So I don't know why in 2017, no one explained that to me. No one communicated that you actually have an autoimmune issue and this is a proper path or study this or whatever. And I can't blame them because I didn't research it either. Like I didn't care. I was just going to take the medicine up took some medicine, didn't feel great, didn't feel the results of why this medicine, so I stopped taking it. I figured in my mind, like, if my thyroid, if I have to take a medicine to replace the function of my thyroid, it's not gonna help my thyroid, it's gonna make it worse. And so that was, that's been my logic the whole time. When, so that's 2017. At the end of 2017, my husband and I and my son Jacob, we moved to Columbia and I was pregnant with Brianna. I got more blood work done during the pregnancy. And the girl who was helping me, the doctor who was helping me, she said, your blood work, your, your tests look normal. This looks normal for a woman who is pregnant is basically my understanding um, of what she said. And so, but because you're pregnant and because it's a little bit off, I'm gonna give you thyroid medication. So I think that during the pregnancy from that time forward, I think I took my thyroid medication. I can't be hundred percent certain, but I did take it um, because I didn't wanna screw up the baby. I wanted the baby to be healthy. More recently, Dr. Chafee told me that doing that was the right action with a thyroid condition. I also want to say, okay, so anyways, years go on. Um, I'm feeling worse and worse and worse as the years go on. My diet's not the best. Um, my sleep is terrible. By the way, not the diet, but the sleep is for sure directly connected to things wrong in the body. We'll just put it that way. I can't say it's directly connected to Hashimoto's, but it's directly connected to things wrong in the body. Low thyroid or Hashimoto's does make a person feel depressed or anxiety, and that's for sure connected to having a low thyroid. Again, watch this interview that I did. When I started carnivore, uh, I had to. I had to start carnivore. I didn't know that I had Hashimoto's then a year and a half ago. I just thought I had low thyroid, and I hadn't even started to handle anything related to my thyroid. I wanted to lose weight, and I was hoping to deal with some gut inflammation. So that's why I started carnivore. Within days, I felt so much better. And like the anxiety I was feeling was gone. I was sleeping again, maybe a week. Um, 
so many issues had resolved that I was like, oh my God, this is magic. This is like 100% what I need to be doing for at least the three months, the, the 90 days I promised myself um, to get through it. And then I've been basically sticking to this way of eating, even if I've eaten things that are off over the course of the last year and a half. So why am I bringing this all up? I'm bringing this up because my body still doesn't feel 100%. It feels so much better than I did before. I feel so much mentally and physically better than I did before, but there's still something wrong. We got the, I got the test results. So 2017, the number 1,000 in, in connected to my thyroid and probably due to antibodies. A year and a half into how I do carnivore, I feel so much better. I feel so much more amazing. 600 plus antibodies in a little in that little measurement that they take of the blood. So I still have a huge condition. I still have this huge autoimmune situation. So I've got my blood work done several times and I've asked for like a thyroid panel, not realizing that you had to ask for um, specifically getting the antibodies checked. I would think that if you asked for an, a thyroid panel, that test would be in there since it's like directly related to the thyroid, but it never was. So I'm going along, I'm doing the carnivore diet. And I'm like, wow, my thyroid numbers are improving. Uh, this is amazing. Like carnivore is healing my thyroid. Not really, because I'm not really actually addressing it. I watched videos from Dr. Berg yesterday after I got these test results and your thyroid numbers can look totally normal and you can still have a disastrous autoimmune situation in your body dealing with the thyroid. It can go undiagnosed for 15 years. So is what he said in his video. So this is crazy. So, but the thing is, I think I actually was diagnosed in 2017. It wasn't communicated correctly because there's no other number that would have been a thousand or maybe he didn't test it. Maybe it was 10. I don't know. Anyways, again, a situation of undiagnosed Hashimoto's. Why did I get this done at all? I was in Chafee's group um, in January. I was in his January challenge and you can ask questions and stuff like that. So I brought up my thyroid and he said that you should check antibodies and then, you know, now this is on me because life goes on January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, and starting in August or so, I'm like, oh, I really got to get my blood work done. Anyways, it's been about a year. I really got to get my blood work done. I could have found out in January and started handling it then, um, but I didn't. So that's on me and on nobody else. But here, and I know I need to do something about it. And if you have a thyroid condition, you really need to check 90 to 98% of women who are diagnosed with a thyroid condition actually have this autoimmune issue called Hashimoto's. Again, I will refer to, please see this interview with Dr. Stone. It is so enlightening. Um, and it'll make you feel like a little bit more at cause over the situation if you have a thyroid condition. So that means 10 to 8% of people that are diagnosed with this are actually correctly diagnosed or 10 to 2% are actually correctly diagnosed and everyone else is not correctly diagnosed. So we're all running around with Hashimoto's. We don't, people are probably taking medications. They don't feel better. Maybe they feel better for a little while. That's apparently what happens. You feel better for a little while, but you're not actually addressing the root cause. Um, from my understanding, any of these autoimmune issues are us self-inflicting this, this situation in our bodies by the food that we eat. Maybe there's other environmental causes, but it's mainly the foods we eat. The seed oils are huge culprit grains, all these things. So no wonder, like going on to a carnivore diet, I just felt so much better. But obviously I still have a huge situation because uh, per the, okay, per Dr. Chafee, if you have like any uh, antibodies, you have Hashimoto's. So per the reference, um, if you have, I think it said up to 50 antibodies, that's like okay to have that in your system. I would prefer to believe Dr. Chafee, but I have more than 600 of these antibodies like floating around in my body. Okay. So what am I gonna do? I am going to, I'm getting some help from some health coaches and in addition, and they're gonna give me some advice and I'm gonna follow that advice. But what I'm gonna do myself and I'm taking it on right now is like a different aspect. I'm going to first cut out all dairy. I believe dairy can be inflammatory and I don't wanna put more inflammatory things into my body. I have been known to have a runny nose depending on the dairy that I eat it. So it's clear that there's some like histamine reactions, histamine responses. I need to get my immune system calmed down. So dairy minus butter, I'm gonna keep butter in my diet, but for sure 90 days, no dairy. Starting today, I'm not gonna have any more dairy, that's it. And then this, and this almost made me cry when I realized it, but I don't think anyone with Hashimoto's is gonna be like, you need to quit drinking coffee. And I'm gonna tell you why I'm gonna quit drinking coffee. And 
I've never had a reason good enough to quit drinking coffee before, but I think that my body is in a flight or fight mode. It's much, it used to be way worse. It was a way worse in a fight or flight response mode before carnivore. But I think that it's still in that situation. And when you drink co coffee, you can, like, you, it's a stimulus. And maybe I think so much coffee, it can, like, affect your adrenals. Then you're in a flight or fight mode, high cortisol, all these sorts of things. So I want to take out, I should, my body, by the way, should not be in, like, a high stress mode. I literally live in the mountains. Like, I am doing this video right here, and I look outside my window right there, and it's just, like, a wall of mountains. It literally looks like a wall of mountains um, from my window, like, as if it's a portrait of mountains outside my window. Okay. So, and this is, like, the least stressful place anybody can live. Like, it doesn't make sense that I feel any stress at all. And the mental stress, I don't, you know, that's not really an issue. It's maybe work gets me a little bit stressed out sometimes kids, but the point is, is that I should put my body in a place where I feel no stress. And I think that coffee is making that a situation. I don't know if coffee directly affects Hashimoto's, but I want to put my body in a position where my immune system calms down and not be more agitated. And I don't know if coffee is affecting that. So those are the two, I'm also getting rid of stevia. That will be the next. So this is my next level of carnivore. Um, getting rid of the coffee, getting rid of the dairy and getting rid of stevia. Maybe, by the way, I don't think all people need to do this, but I think after like a year and a half of me doing carnivore and I've gotten to like a certain plateau and I know that I have this issue, I need to do some other stuff. Um, additional things, I'm going to be taking some liver supplements, beef liver supplements, and I will do a specific video about that later, how you can uh, make your own at home. And then I will continue to eat how I eat because if I just eat, take those things out. Oh, by the way, like maybe I'm not going to get rid of spices, probably not going to get rid of lime. I don't think that's inflaming my system. I probably will make sure that when I make food for my son that has onions, I will not eat it. <laughs> like I th I'm trying, like I'm trying to like separate out. Like I think the only difference in my carnivore diet from like super strict will be like, I, I still have, I still put lime on my food. Again, I don't think that that is something that's keeping my body inflamed. For sure, dairy. And for sure, like, I, I know I have a coffee addiction. Uh, I woke up this morning and I didn't drink coffee. And uh, I realized I was starving. I was so hungry. Coffee is an appetite suppressant. So I could literally drink a coffee in the morning and I'm usually hungry around 11. So then this morning, I just, I was hungry because I didn't drink my coffee. I ate breakfast, I ate two, two burgers, and I ate like uh, four, three or four egg yolks, maybe five. And then two, I was at 11, 10, 30 or 11. I'm like, I am so hungry. So it doesn't, so I need to see what actually happens to my body by not putting the stimulant uh, diuretic appetite suppressant in my body multiple times a day and see what happens. Um, and maybe it will be life-changing or maybe in 90 days my test results are exactly the same and uh, then I'm probably going to drink coffee again. And I hope not. I hope that it does some improvement uh, to my body. And uh, I, I want to say if you have a thyroid condition, look into it and study it and find out like how you can handle it. If you've not been diagnosed with Hashimoto's, maybe you really need to research that further since the evidence and studies apparently show 90% of women that have, ha have a thyroid condition that's actually autoimmune um, and up to 98%. So you could be 90 to 98% in that category and just being having the treatment done wrong and getting no results and no changes. I truly believe that if I find the right way of eating that I can put this thing fully into remission. I do believe I will probably having to have supplements uh, to help support the thyroid and that's based on even research of yesterday of studying Dr. Berry videos. So I understand people like beef salt water, meat salt water, that's all you need. But if you are in such a bad physical shape or if there's something really wrong, just be open. Have your have your mind open to, or be open minded about possibly there's other things that are still natural that can be done. I know that there's some medications like Armour Thyroid. I can't get it here in Colombia. Uh, and then there's another medication for people with Hashimoto's that could be taken. And I'm going to try again to do this as natural as possible. I've gotten to this point not taking meds, so I'm going to continue. But 
again in 90 days. I'm going to do this for 90 days. I will see what my coach, is, my coach says about um, any supplements I should take. And if I do need to take meds, I will. I just don't want to put myself in a position where I'm on meds for the rest of my life. So I would like to get my own autoimmune condition under control so that this doesn't happen. But I'm go not going to be closed-minded if in the future I, and I've done this little experiment, if I do need to actually take meds. Um, and as I go along in the next 90 days, I will keep you updated. I'm, I will get specific blood work done at the end of 90 days to see where this is at, to see if it has changed at all. Okay, so I guess that's it. And if it has changed, oh my God, that, that would be amazing because maybe I could actually share that information, help other women with Hashimoto's or men. I don't, do men get it? It's, it's much more common in women. It's much more common in women. It happens after your thyroid gets screwed up after a stress event or hormonal changes. Uh, apparently a lot of women, like I did, get diagnosed with a thyroid condition after pregnancy. Uh, from what I understand from this interview that I did with Heather Stone, Dr. Heather Stone, is that your immune system is protecting the baby. It kind of screws with your own immune system and never gets back to normal after pregnancy is my understanding. I could be a little bit wrong, but there you go. Um, yeah, that's what I want to say in this video. I'm going to put at the end that interview with Dr. Stone. So if you have a thyroid condition, go watch it. Any thyroid condition, Hashimoto's or not, go watch it. It's super enlightening. Um, I'm not saying, I'm not, I don't even care about the views. Like that information is so good and so helpful and everyone needs to hear about it. So video is that interview is so good. It's so helpful. It has such good information. And if you have a thyroid condition, you watch it. I'm not trying to like get more views. I'm trying to actually spread information that could be super helpful for you if you're dealing with that. Okay. Bye.